Hello and welcome to the Digital Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today we're recording this on Sunday, June 19th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes or Doubter5 and as usual we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello Wombat. Hey it's me the Wombat. Welcome and our guests today are John Richards from over in London Way. Uh, we have Dread Pirate Higgs from Western Canada. Welcome. Arr. And uh, Joe Sky. how are you? Welcome. Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? Uh, you're in uh, Texas? I, I forget. Am. Okay. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, God, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, here in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. And we'll tell you more about that group after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's on our topic today? Today, we're going to give Christians everything they want for Father's Day. Isn't that fantastic? We're going to go. (laughs) Oh, great. (laughs) But before we get into it, let's throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Hicks for a weekly invocation. Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, how Dante be thy noodles, thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs, for thine are the meatballs, and the sauces, and the grog, whenever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Guys, do you think there might be a schism in the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster based on whether you do this or if you do this? <laughs> do you think there will be like absolute divisions in the future? The crossed yeah, hands are that's, blasphemers. That's, 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 ah, there's this too. Where there's two eye stalks. See? There it is. There yeah. it is. There it is. Uh, <laughs> the we, had <laughs> we had another comer in, uh, George Brown, second and a half. Hope you're doing well. Happy Father's Day. Yep. Welcome. Oh, oh, you're on mute. Getting set up, but it's all good. Um, guys, it's going to be a good show today. I want to talk about Father's Day. We have a lot of fathers on the show. I want to talk about June 19th. That's awesome, though, as well. And then I want to give Christians literally everything they want for the rest of the show. How about that? As Dread it goes through the many changes of getting his light <laughs> set up. John Richards, you're a dad <laughs> and a father to beautiful children. So, you know, happy about that. I want to ask you, how how is family life and uh, what is your plans for Father's Day? Sorry. Well, it, it, it's wonderful here. I, I mean, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm a dad times two because I've had two families. And let me tell you, this will shock you. My oldest son is 49. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's in France. And, and in the, the contrast, young, your youngest child is how much? The youngest one is 11. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, she, she's a girl. She's, um, she's 11. So I have two of each. Which mm-hmm. is, you know, cool. E- Happy Father's e- Day. Happy Father's equitable, Day. I think, isn't that? Sexually equal or something. Good two job. Parody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Good that's parody. right. Yeah. And, and beautiful. So, so I, I love the role of being a father, a dad. Yeah. Good. So, yeah. But I do recommend to everyone, to all and sundry, this is my advice, never have children. <laughs> okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. I, I don't take it myself, but it's still my advice to everyone else. Yeah. If anything, let their parents raise the kid and then try to marry them because then, then you legally own them, right? There's your advice. Don't take children. Just wait until they grow up and then you can marry them and then they're your possessions. Larry mm-hmm. Rhodes, Doubter <laughs> Five. We. You got kids. How, how are uh, they doing? Well, What's father life um, like? Um, I inherited one when I got married. <laughs> no, I've never had actual children myself. I've never changed a diaper in my life. Um, so, you know, I took uh, John's advice uh, until, you know, I got married. <laughs> you are a dad still either way, because I see how I much am. I am. Mm-hmm. Loves you. So, Very and- proud father of a, of a lovely young daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, fatherhood comes in a lot of different forms. And I respect that as well. 
uh, and I'm see they give you enough time to play games on your virtual headset and ride your motor ride your motorcycle. You can't ask for anything. Mm -hmm. right? Nope. <laughs> Dread Pirate Higgs, the Arr. man of hobbies, and and uh, what is the right word for it? Invocations, vocations. That's probably it. The vocation special. <laughs> <laughs> vocations and invocations. Yeah, you. How's your family? How's your Father's Day going so far? Is it uh, well, I mean, it's it's pretty darn early. My wife isn't even up yet. Okay, so, okay. Um, okay. And she's actually sleeping directly uh, above me, so <clears throat> she will probably be up soon. Um, because, uh, well, she she doesn't share my passion for uh, this sort of activity. So, what do you do on a Father's Day in Canada? Like, what's the occasion? Do you get like all dressed ruffles, or do you get like bacon? Like, what's the what's the du jour? Oh, I'm hoping for bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, every day is a good day with bacon. So a Father's Day with extra bacon is is even better. Fantastic, can't complain. <laughs> I love it. George Brown, your mic's working. How you doing? How's your family? Is my mic working? Can you yep. hear me? Yes, uh -huh. sir. I'm I'm wearing my space alien headphones. They look mm. great. Yeah, I, I got them from the recycling center, being suitably cheap. Um, uh, people are having to replace their headphones because the newer computers don't have jacks on them which are compatible mm. with existing headphones right so mm -hmm. um you know i've been experimenting i've been experimenting with reducing the bass response of headphones so i can understand people better in zoom meetings so i've actually glued foam rubber nice uh, to to Do literally head. let out the bass and it's it's actually working this degree good. of experimentation is something that I endorse on this show. So keep science. Yeah. Going. And then eventually we'll get it to where it's a full face mask and you just have like a <laughs> visor with like little LED lights on it. And like, these are my headphones. This is what I use to communicate with people through space. Like what you're doing is communicating with people through space. It should look sci-fi. I'm, 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 well, I'm, 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 I'm um, what do you call it? Recycling stuff, you know, that's supposed to be sure. good for the environment and all that. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and just about everything I'm, I'm using at this moment technically is secondhand. Nice. Actually. Cool. Yeah. Sky, love to yes, talk sir. to you. Do you have wow. a, a Father's Day wish or, or appreciation? No. Okay. Fair enough. Know. Listen, I can tell I'm, you right I now. Have kind of, I have kind of an untraditional family structure, and uh, no, I don't have kids. Okay. My dad is dead. Hey, that I, light behind you is very, very bright. <laughs> yeah, it's I'm God. To figure out if I can adjust that or not. I, I can't even tell if I'm center of the screen. Actually. You're a little off center, but we can. We'll work on the the smaller details. Until then, we'll just have yeah. the angel on sky shoulder. It looks like yeah. a big yeah. spaceship uh, to the to yeah. the side of well, your I'm head. I'm sure if you, if you moved a little bit to your right, I think you would mm. you would actually be in a halo. There you go. Yeah. Oh, oh, there he is. That's way better. Now, right there. now he went from the angel on his shoulder to just literally being Jesus. Now, yeah. that's great. Fantastic. <laughs> that, that, that's the perfect shot for radio. Yeah, that was I was to say. <laughs> oh, yeah, backlight. good radio. <laughs> All right. Uh, the last thing is I'm a single guy, but I got a cat. I'm happy with the cat and they, I'm very well. So I've had them now for about six years. I feel pretty good with our relationship now. And you know what? Like I said, fatherhood in all forms, right? So uh, I'm happy to spend a holiday where I can think about the goodwill that I've imparted on, you know, any animals or other human beings. And it doesn't just have to be family members. It could be good friends, but go out. If you know a dad, if you know a single mom, if you know anybody, wish them happy Father's Day if they are if they got people they're taking care of. I think that's important. So you're Vinny's dad? Yeah, I am Vinny's dad. I'm a cat dad. What else can I say? Uh, I also go up to the animal shelter. I'll be doing that later today and taking care of some more animals. Step kids, step step pups and stuff like that. Guys, it's well, also true. I'm a pet parent. Okay, okay. I didn't quite hear that. We want to I, have, I, have a little dog, I have a little dog who just turned one. Nice, good. And powerful she is, she is part husky part chihuahua whoa okay wow how did that happen <laughs> i have no idea I'm, we think that the chihuahua probably found the husky sleeping and they just ran up to it She's part her. chihuahua part husky but both their parents are part acrobat that's how it happened mm, there you go <laughs> uh it's also june 19th celebration black lives matter also really happy to just have uh appreciation on the federal level for you know emancipation so really happy about yeah. that too 
But what I really want to, the thing I'm really excited. It's Juneteenth show too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really excited to jump into the topic today. So uh, how about this? Just as a quick preamble, Christians win. Christianity wins. We know Christians God exists. We know it for a fact. It's not an ambiguous point. It's not just my opinion anymore. This is the case that the worldview of Christianity actually takes place. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because I heard an interesting quote. People tend to see what they want to see, and we suffer the consequences of it. So what, what other way can we highlight some concerns we may have if we just wholly take it for, for granted that the Christian worldview is, in fact, accurate, existing, and how will that impact society? And how give them the world society? they want. Is yeah, give saying? them the world they want and see if they actually like it or not. <laughs> because mm-hmm. I think there may be some questions. So for the rest of this discussion, let's not labor on the point of like which God or like which version of Christianity. Let's just say general Christianity is true, that God already made that self clear. But now what do we need in society? Now when we look back in society and we do a little accounting, do we still need a space program? Do we still need funeral homes? Like how do we treat each other now that we know that the Christian worldview is accurate. And I want to throw out some examples. So one, and this is stemming off of something that uh, Larry likes to say, is that death is now officially just a change of address, right? And if that is the case, and it's just, you know, he's just moving from one place to another place, wouldn't that mean that now funerals no longer have to be like these sad affairs? You can actually be celebrating. It's like, oh, thank goodness. Uh, She got in a car crash. Great. Linda's now finally in heaven. And we can check that up. And it's like, great. We don't have to worry about her. Just clean up the car trash. You can throw away the body. It's not a big deal. It's like all good. And you'll, the family will see her in heaven too. If they, if they make it through judgment, whatever, we'll get the text message. Everything's fine. What is death anymore? Like death is not a bad thing. That's, that could be an immediate good thing. What do you think? What do you guys think about that? Well, why wouldn't we all just be lemmings and and jump off the cliff and, and get our way up there right away? Catholicism still applies. You have to wait until you actually have like a terminal illness or just don't take your medicine if you are in fact sick or something like that I and see. then let it happen naturally. What you do you think? Still, John Rick, you, still need, then, George? you still need an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> John Richards, what do you think? Well, I'm, I'm well prepared actually because I some time ago I bought the domain mm-hmm. afterlife.cloud Okay, so look at I've you. Already got the, I've already got the address to move to. Mm. Very, so very be nice. John Richards at afterlife. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, so all mail can be forwarded to his address. So if there's any yeah. afterlife sort of things that he has to figure out, because ghosts are yeah. real now too. Right? Now, if you start getting responses, you got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I do like that. Um, I, I, uh, George, you had a comment. What's up? I, I said, uh, coming from a Jewish background, mm. I, I feel like I've walked into this this place where the lunatics are running the asylum. Very, it's, you know, it's, we're the guys who got caught in the in the crossfire during the Crusades. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a late movie twist now, where the pe- the same asylum was actually the right people all along. It's, so it's, the, it's the world is like <laughs> Arkham Asylum. Yes, kind of. It's like Batman's the only crazy one here. Um, <laughs> so you were you hit on a good point, Dred. What do you? Why don't we all just become lemmings? It's like, well, you have to still wait until it's your time. You have to get the invitation. So if you get sick, you know, you may not be worthwhile not taking medicine. If you get, uh, if you need a life changing surgery, that could actually be criminal if a surgeon wants to do that on you. Because, but but the- by extension. Hmm. Uh, not taking treatment is in fact surrendering or, or giving up your life, right? Like, wouldn't it be this? Wouldn't it be sort of a passive suicide? Yeah. Uh, to uh, I think with I, you know to not do the surgery or not take the medicine because it's God's will who made me sick in the first place. Right. So I'm just going to keep getting you sick until through. I die because when I die I go to through. heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what? who am I to take medicine when I'm sick? It was God's will. Who made me sick? I can pray to God and be like, yeah, I made you sick. It's like, I'm not going to mess with this. I'll either be saved by God's grace or I won't be. And if I die, it's just a change of address. Why? In fact, we should go another level and say anyone who goes out of their way to sell medicine should be, that should be a criminal law because that's going against the will of God. If I, if you have cancer in your uh, curable cancer and it's cured, that should be 
criminalized. What do you think, John Richards? And then we'll go back to George. Well, I, I'm thinking that abortion would actually be desirable. Abortion would be desirable at that point, wouldn't it? <laughs> 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 that and capital punishment, right? Like That's the those- best thing. The best thing you could do for your your egg <laughs> yes is like prematurely have it dist- oh man that went dark really fast but yeah george brown what do you think well you know the good lord made this bottle of pills that i'm holding in my hand and the good lord made atheists sure so there sure i have some that would guys. still be outlawed in the new nation i think it would be outlawed in the new nation too one you can't be an atheist two Put away that medicine. Is that medicine? Put it away. That's that's God's business. Well, you know, there are already Christian sects that, that uh, practice that. It's, uh, what is it, Christian science? Yeah. You yeah. know, oh, they, yeah. they don't allow uh, certain medical treatments and transfusions and things. Well, so Jehovah's just, Witnesses are that way, too. Yeah, yeah Jehovah's no blood Witnesses. transfusions and Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses. Yep. But uh, only today I had a conversation with my former sister-in-law, mm. who is very much a Christian. And it was uh, along the lines of um, God gave the surgeons their brains and their skills to perform these operations. So uh, it's a bit of a vague area now, isn't it? No, I actually think it's way more. So it's, it's vague if you don't have access to a God that can tell you what he did and what he didn't do. But in a Christian worldview, you can always pray to a God who will answer your prayers and you can figure out if he actually made you sick or not. And if the intention is, I made you sick, can I have a cure? No, you wouldn't even ask for it because you know, you know, you can go to heaven if you die. So like, so, why would you even waste time on medicine? It's just like, ah, oh, this sucks. I got a sprained ankle. Dang it. I wish it was a gun wound to my heart. I wish I could die and go to heaven right now. Why am I wasting time with this discomfort? What do you think? We've just, put, we've just put all health workers out of a job. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't need them. We don't need them. It's way better to be in heaven anyway, right? What do you think, Dred? I was I was just going to say, you know, sports teams would uh, no one would ever win a game because uh, all the players for either side are praying for God to intervene. So either <laughs> either he's he's picking sides or he's not all love. Right, yeah, right, right, you know? right, right. Yeah, hockey sports. That's going to be an interesting concept yeah. because if both teams are all professional sports players are out of work. Like, There'd also oh, be no God. wars because, of course, he can't be on both. Would he? I'm confused. Why? Yes. Why are you confused, John? Talk to me. Well, God is always on both sides of every war, or at least claimed to be. Right now, there's yeah. just a clear. If anything, God is good at it's choosing a one group against another group. So we we'll just make it very clear which group is the winning group. But but surely war is desirable too because they're just all going to go to heaven, aren't they? It's a sort exactly. of shortcut to the rapture. It and, is, and, it is. And, and wouldn't this be the case that once it was determined which side was being favored, that the other side would just throw down their arms and give up? Why not? So like, well, I mean, in my sense, they can't, they can't, they can't win. We're thinking about this in the context where death is a bad thing or harm is a bad thing. When in fact, in a Christian worldview, these are good things because it gets you closer to the fast track to going to heaven. So you have to like, I know we have atheist brains in this call, but you have to completely flip the foundation of what's bad and good because it is good to cause harm it is good to to die because it gets you the fast track to ultimate internal Mm. paradise and when that's the case now we're living in a society where we all have basically our social rules completely broken and we have this Mm. worldview where it is actually kind of a good idea to unintentionally die or or uh passively commit suicide somehow so that you can get to that so we're gonna We're going to let all the murderers out of prison to carry on with their good work. If they pray to God, Jesus and get forgiveness, then yes, absolutely. Because that only increases my chances of going to heaven. <laughs> right? Kill me now. Kill me now. Have... You can wear a shirt that says it. You could say it, but you can't actually do yeah. it. So it's just like, just hey, put a big murderers. target on your chest. Exactly. Isn't that great? Larry, where was Christian world I just wondering what would happen in a in a nation like that if everybody acted like Andrea Yates did. Mm. Want to give the context did. of that story? Yeah. Well, uh, she was, you know, a real fundamentalist Christian. She had several children, and she was so afraid that if they grew up, that they would uh, 
they were in danger of going to hell. I'll put it that way. So she, one afternoon, she went, took them all one by one to the bathroom and drowned them. Yep. Right. So that she would guarantee that they would go to heaven because her church preached that uh, young children, when they die, go to heaven. Right. right. She was willing to take the punishment so that her children right. could go to heaven. Mm-hmm. And, and well, no, because all she could do is ask for forgiveness and be forgiven, right? right. Oh, mm-hmm. hey, you found the loophole, Dre. She's got the out. Well, it is a crazy worldview to be in. But let me tell you something. We got dark so fast. I should have started on funeral yep. last. But <laughs> here's some good things. Some, some, some oh, silver linings to this new worldview. Yeah. Funerals, in my opinion, should be celebrations to an extent oh. of a person's life. Well, oh. Yes, they are sad. It is easy to see someone go. And I think it is healthy to recognize that, but I feel like religion has infiltrated the, the funeral process so much that there isn't really the time to grieve on the loss. But if you were to also turn that into a celebration of a person's life, it might be more cathartic in a way. And I think if we truly accept that death is just a change of address, we can take those same pleasantries and turn them into more of a celebratory affair. And I feel like there are some even really famous atheists who've done the similar thing where they have taken opportunities for when I die, don't come around here and just be sad and wear black, have a potluck. Let's celebrate some of the papers that I published or like some of the feats. Which is more like the tradition of the wake. Yes. Yeah. 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 They've they've been doing it right in Ireland for a long time. Yes. And Mm -hmm. yeah, infamously. Yes. No, I think that's right. We, We should celebrate the person's life and not get all tied up on the fact that they're dead and moved, moved on wherever. Sure. Um, uh, they did live. They had had life. They had loved ones. They had friends celebrate it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, you know, and one thing you really see a lot more of, if What's you that? want, if you want to do a good job, celebrate it while they're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I see this on, uh, on our highways here in, in, in BC anyway. Um, where accidents happen, where a person has died, Mm -hmm. there's now a shrine where they, where they died, you know, in addition to the one that would be at whatever grave site that they're at. But, uh, you'd see a lot more of those because Mm -hmm. anywhere anybody died, where all of a sudden be a place to mark with, uh, you know, the the appropriate icon. Joy. Uh, Now I, so here's my flip on the idea. I'm just going to linger on this idea a little bit more. Would so right now, death is sort of this a big thing, and it's big because it's finality, right? But when you take that finality away from death, would we still enshrine sites where people die? Would we still put little pieces of stone where people are buried? Because now we know death is just this transitory thing. Why celebrate it? Why acknowledge it whatsoever? If anything, I'd be envious of people who are going to heaven because that makes me feel like well, I just... Because it becomes the portal. It's the portal from which they left to the better place. So hmm. it's yeah, enshrining the portal. So it'd be recognized and, as a portal. And some religious like Stargate. Uh, Christian sects believe that you don't really go to heaven until the rapture. You don't go when you die. You, go when you just get stored. So, okay. yeah. John Richards. Just, just think of it as the graduation ceremony. <laughs> This degree means nothing. It's like it would if you, if you did it in science. Speaking of which, we could probably talk about science later on. But John, uh, Sky, did you have a comment? I think I saw you raise your hand. Well, I wanted to uh, give you all some good news. The Pope, Pope Frank, Pope Frank has decreed that good atheists go to heaven. So well, okay. We're, we're in. We're in. Um, so just be good and you get to go. Although, sure. I don't know. Sitting, sitting around with Hold it. Hold it. I don't want to go. Christians for eternity isn't selling point yeah. they it. Save it for I want to go where the cool guys yeah, 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 yeah. cool are. Don't send me where the grammar Nazis are going. Let me have some yeah. time, please. I'm crying out loud. Though listen, we know that there are ghosts in, in the Bible, right? So that would mean ghosts are in play. And I like John Richard's idea of having an email address because that means we could actually get emails from heaven for people who are already having a good time. And you can just be like, hey, Linda, I know you got that car crash. Are you in heaven now? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk to you later. I'm going to a, a, a really terrible concert because there's no cool people here. So it's just mm-hmm. kazoos and people <laughs> blowing in grass reeds. I hope there's good music here in the future. Kill some, <laughs> kill some rock reed. stars for us. <laughs> oh, oh, <no. laughs> like, oh, this sucks. Okay. Uh, uh, Dread Pirate, 
you made a good comment. I want to touch on it. You said the healthcare industry workers would basically be out of a job. And John Richards, you made the similar point too. I don't think they'd be the only ones. I actually think we'd have an entire court system that would go completely absolved mm. because we wouldn't need a court system when we have the absolute law being given to us by God. And mm -hmm. so like someone robbed the bank and prayed to, for forgiveness for it and got it and confirmed got it. How can we how can we persecute that person or criminalize that person to any extent? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, in that yeah. case, uh, we would have had to left uh, so, Dahmer out of prison yeah. when he got when he accepted Christ. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, one good thing is there would be no lawyers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love the silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> what, what we're doing here is substituting pastors for murderers. <laughs> They become the new useful agents of the God. New clergy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, you know what though? In in the in the oh man, in the weirdest sense, that hasn't really changed much in, in the in his <laughs> annals of history. But I am I would say this court cases would change to two different things. One, we would have instantly half as many because the rule would be if you're a woman, just listen to the closest man nearby you, right? Right. And then the second one would be okay, well, if you do to, if you do go to court, if you pray for forgiveness. You, you can't you can't criminalize it i mean i've already got right. forgiveness from god you're absolved i'm absolved i'm i'm just gonna keep doing what i was doing and and everything should be fine again the goal is get to heaven as soon as you can george brown second and a half what do you think i think that being the, the jewish atheist in the room you know a double doubly damned double outsider I still feel like I'm in the little loony bin, you know, where the inmates are running the asylum. Mm, yeah. Help Listen. me. Help me, guys. <laughs> I also feel like I need it. Here's, here's a, an analogy for you, George. Sure. Just, just take your snakes and ladders board, mm. turn it upside down. <laughs> so we all want to go up a snake and we'll, we don't want to fall down a ladder. I also want to throw out, we got five minutes before the break. I want to throw out one more thought model for you. Construction industries would also go to the wayside because everyone would be able to move faith with mountain or move mountains with their faith. So you wouldn't need Caterpillar making giant tractors. You wouldn't need people building streets. You just need people in hard hats praying. Well, at, at I mean, making, no, I take exception talk to, to me, that. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> just, just changing America to a Christian nation would not make miracles happen. Yes, it would. I that's mean, the world view of miracles do exist. That's what I'm. Well, that's, that's the world view. To. But I mean, you can. We had a world view like that during the dark ages, and mountains didn't move when you prayed for them to. Larry, no, no, I, it I, means that the world view is true. Yes, oh, that's actually, what I'm saying. Not that it's just a world view. Well, it's we're true. saying this is the case, but this uh -huh. is what the world looks yeah. like now. It's not a paradise, is it? Right. Yeah. And so, if anything, if you like being in, oh, if you want to grow up to be a construction guy, get good at praying because that's how everyone's going to be moving mass. If you want to move water, you pray, and you can make oceans. What what, split. what is chaos? What chaos? Let's yeah, yeah. say that. <laughs> I mean, you don't like your neighbor. You pray for him, his grass to die or something. Well, he doesn't like you, so he prays for your house to catch fire. The whole world would just be in chaos. But <laughs> if I it mean, gets you closer to going to heaven, it's all good. Because this world is chaos. No, this world no, is doomed no. to die. That's well, why. Then, like I say, children you know, would be killed by their parents so that they'd automatically go to heaven and wouldn't right. yeah, yeah. You know, stand the chance Dread. of going to hell. Dred, yeah, yeah, what yeah. I, I was going to say too that uh, there there'd uh, likely be a lot more claims of virgin birth. Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I think and celibacy of course. and teen pregnancy would go up dramatically high, both at the same <laughs> rate. I think we, God would be like, "Oh, they're not having enough babies. Let me yeah. just start making babies." Boom, 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 boom. You're pregnant. And by the way, you can't have sex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're at the bottom well, of the it, hour. It puts the condom, uh, it puts the contraceptive industry out of out of. Oh sure. I mean, it doesn't boom. exist. Yeah. Love it. You don't need it. We, anyway, Larry, we got to go for a break at this point. Stay tuned for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, one hundred three point nine LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Larry, you got... Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. 
I'm Dowder Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year, have over 1,000 members, and we have weekly in-person meetings at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Uh, look for us inside at the high top tables, usually the loudest and happiest group, unless it's pretty. Then we'll be out on the deck. Look yeah. around for us. We also have Tuesday. Oh, well, that's every Tuesday evening, by the way. It starts around 530. We also have Tuesday evening Zoom meetings. If you'd like to join us, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or at less chat se at gmail.com <clears throat> you can find ask on facebook meetup.com or not go to their website at knoxvilleatheist.org or just google knoxville atheist it's just that simple hmm. by the way if you don't live in knoxville you can still go to meetup and search for an atheist group in your town don't find one start, start one. one wombat where do you want to pick up i i have i'm i'm gonna Dread or Doubter Five, I'm going to stay <laughs> on you real quick. I'm just saying it's a fact now that the Christian worldview is correct. It's fact. We gave it to them. They won. It's done. But you know, you would think you'd wake up the next day if you're a Christian and see nothing but paradise if the Christian worldview was, in fact, the case for everybody. But what we're realizing is that it would be utter chaos in, in a sense. And if anything, if you had any sort of meaningful vocation, it may not even exist anymore just due to the fact that all of our principles have now swapped from concerning the, the wellness or the well-being of people to what can I do to get to heaven as soon as I possibly can? Because this world sucks and paradise is just one bad incident away. John Richards or uh, Dredd, doubt or five. Doubt or five. Okay. Uh, no, I was just going to recap for people who may have just come in. We're sure. talking about the not only is the Christian worldview in power, right. that, but Christianity per se is actually true. Yes. All of it. Yeah. And so, so we're, we're following that down the rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy. Rebel. And also, listen, the weirdest things you've been telling me so far is like, okay, so my neighbor can pray that my lawn can be destroyed. Okay, fine, whatever. Destroy my lawn. Okay, so what's the worst thing that can happen? Uh, someone might be murder me because they got out of jail because they prayed to God to forgive them. It's like, okay, so what? If he kills me, I go to heaven. So what's the problem? This is nothing but upside. Let's let this yeah. happen. John Richards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you've, played, you've hit it on the head because disasters would mm. become attractions. Yeah, it would be like like a pilgrimage to rush towards a volcano. Right. There's a world. <laughs> there's a tsunami happening in Japan. Let me get my tickets right now. Yes. Oh man! And, <laughs> and, so the, <laughs> and the disaster movies. They would become like rom coms. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd be romance movies. They'd just be like, oh, I can't wait to get on this place where the comet's going to smash us to smithereens. Dread yes, Pirate, what yes. do you think? You you could never get insurance against an act of God. Oh, oh why would which you is need already insurance the case, in the first place. Which is already the case, I guess. I guess yeah, the insurance yeah. industry is out too. Larry Rhodes, what do you think? Well, I was just thinking that if if all of it was true, I mean, if 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 praying got you whatever you prayed for. It would be like everybody in the world having their own um, magic lamp and, and Aladdin, uh, I mean, a genie, yeah. because anything you prayed for, I mean, you'd never have to go to work. You'd never have to go to jail. You, there would be no jails and no schools. You could just wish for what you wanted. Uh, I mean, everything in the world would just be chaos, total chaos. I have a problem with that because you wouldn't want anything here. You would want to go to heaven in my head. And from my point of view, if I was mm. if I was that Christian mindset, I don't want a new fancy car. I want to go to heaven. So why am yeah. I sitting here praying for someone's? Why fancy would anybody car live past the age of um, knowledge? That I mean, like seven. As soon as you pass that late level and you can go to heaven, boom! Pray to go to heaven. Get it. Gone. You don't even pray have to, to go die. to heaven. Pray to go to heaven and you're gone. Well, if someone offs you, you still have to wait for some sort of crazy thing because it's God's will well, that you, you made right. seven. Well, you can say, I, I pray to go to heaven while I'm still alive. I'm up there, you know, gone. You can't pray to go to heaven. You have to, you know, the, the path to heaven is through an eye, a camel going through eye of a needle. It's going to be harder than that. You just can't be, God, give me to heaven. And then you start going crazy. But, but you have Jesus to let... say, whatever you pay, pray for, you will, ha you will get. <laughs> 
<laughs> John Richards, you want to step in here? Is there anything that you want to comment on? Well, I was I was going to bring up a news item because, of course, George is the Jew in the in the, sure. in the room. Sure. Uh, well, the secular Jew in the room, and he was mentioning how um, uh, abortions were now legal in our new world, which is pertinent. I did. Because did, oh, didn't you? Sorry, my memory. No, no. I said I said we get cro- caught in the crossfire all the time. Mm. Well, yeah. I mean, in this new world where you know Christianity is the thing. Yes. They would be. They would be de- desirable. No, not desirable. I, I confuse myself now. <laughs> down, in, down in Florida, it's chaos. It's chaos. Abortion <laughs> would be a uh, a truly compassionate thing you could do if you were finding out that you're pregnant because it's the fast track to send the baby to heaven and then you can meet yes, with them in it. heaven yeah. and then it's totally yeah. good. Then you're in heaven with your baby. It's all good. Well, down, down in Florida, a bit further south from where George is, the state has adopted a very strict anti-abortion law, mm. but the Jews down there are objecting to it because in the Jewish religion, abortion is not only permissible, but desirable in certain circumstances. Wow. So at the moment we have, a conflict between the Jews and the Christians of Florida. Sure. Well, that, that's really funny because there's so many Jewish people from New York City who've moved to Florida. You know? <laughs> yes. Uh, I'll and probably out. some Canadians too to get out of that cold weather. You know? We would solve the problem of other religions, if anything, because there wouldn't need sheiks would realize, oh, that's the being. Okay, well, we're going to have to figure out something to do with all these turbans. We're going <laughs> to or rags. Yeah. Or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, the fezes. I don't know if that's a religion as well, but like they would have to figure out a way to put them all. Pasta parents would have to be like, dang it. But I still like pasta. Like it would be uh, there wouldn't be atheists anymore because atheists would know that a God exists. It's like, right. But whether they choose well, to worship is their own bag of potatoes after that. But still, you have the situation where there is a God. It's made himself known. Christianity won. But you still have these problems. And I feel like the one of the most saddest things for me is that science progress, scientific progress, becomes absolutely meaningless or, if anything, taken away. Yeah. Why would we care about a model that tries to discover how the universe works when now there's a fast line connector to the creator of the universe? Yeah. Will yeah. or will not tell you. Yeah. Well, what do you think? We, we go back to that state where you know all things are just made of goop. Mm, yeah, it's right? all magical goop. Because there's, there's no need to you know, uh, dissect anything or examine anything. You just take it for what it is because it was created that way. And that's just the way it is. George. Well, I have an aside here. Uh, I'd like to do a reality check with you guys. Um, A couple of years ago, I had major surgery at a Baptist hospital. And does this present a paradox or not in terms of respect for science? Let me ask you, Christian, or you guys who came from Christian origins, to give me a reality check on this. I mean, I thought the treatment I got at this hospital and the surgery itself was pretty good. Sure. So I'm very confused because I thought these folks don't believe in science. So we live in a world where together for dissonance can, is both uh, uh, yes. existing and profitable. And so, right. you know, if they were Baptist scientists who only prayed for people, that hospital wouldn't exist anymore. So they have to learn the science from secular principles and then apply it in the religious tape tapestry to, to be appealing to other Baptists. What do you think, Larry? Well, yeah, um, I think in a rational world, that would be true. Uh, but we would still live in a rational world. Uh, given the premise that we have during this show, I mean, everybody's looking over one particular item uh, satan would be real and he'd be out there messing with people okay i mean and he's a supernatural being almost as as strong as god here's my thing i i feel 10 out of 10 times satan always gets a bad rap i this is going to be terrible i know it's going to be clipped but in my head god is the thug god is the bully god is the one who's like this is the fastest this is the terrible person Satan every yeah. single time is like, hey, let me give you some access to knowledge. Hey, let me tell you, this guy isn't in your best interest. Oh, you don't want to do a miracle for me? I don't. I respect that. I'm going to take your consent and I'm just going to leave you alone. There are so many weird stories where Satan is going in and in, 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 incidentally helping people or going against yeah. God's terrible plan for how reality is constructed. Mm-hmm. 
And I feel you like if he like, was around, go for it. You sound like someone who's read the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> i feel like well satan is selling people who actually read the bible it's like if you read this book tell me who the good guy is and who the bad guy is yeah, and it's yeah. like you can just give me a short list i'm like kid the guy who's right. drowning babies on chapter one is the bad guy yes. the yes. one who's giving dietary advice to nudists is probably telling some good stuff like you should probably eat some yes. more apples i think it's good yeah. for you it's like yeah, yeah yes i agree i got right. another thought because ahead, um Bob. if if as dread said everything is made of goop mm. What does that make Gwyneth Paltrow? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that puts her out of business, eh? Yeah. Though oh, she might she might be the new mother, Mary. Oh yeah, I'm, yeah, right. I'm it is, um, almost literally, right? Just putting yes. pushing goop out. <laughs> from what the, from what the Pope yeah. said, is Madeline Murray O'Hare in heaven? And do I want to be there with her? Yeah, does it retroactively take effect? That's what I mean. Because because she, I, I understand she had a wretchedly horrible temperament. Mm. So even though she was an atheist, I don't think I want to be up in heaven with her. Yeah, well, just avoid her. <laughs> but there are a lot of other. There are a lot of other reasons not to be there. there. Are a lot of streets be there. paved with gold. Right, right. right. Well, yeah. Bert, Bertrand Russell's there. Yeah. Oop. Every. I mean, it's not everyone who's going to heaven, but yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, if uh, if the Pope is correct, all the atheists have been going to heaven, so mm -hmm. you well, know, you'd have a lot of friends there. As long as we're doing, good we're work. so blessed. So in Revelation yes. twenty twelve, the Bible says that everyone will be judged by their works. So if you're a halfway decent person, you're probably in. Hmm. I think the the most startling recognition that i realize is john's comment in that if there is a world disaster that we know is impending or coming to us we would all migrate there as soon as we possibly can and i think we'd have more knowledge. we'd have more access ways to get there now because now anyone if they have enough faith can walk on water and i imagine if they have a comparable faith they could probably drive on water too what would stop them it's like if i can walk on water i should be able to drive on water too so it's like where's the comet where's the big earthquake coming where's the fissure where's the fault break where's the the pandemic <laughs> well you know and and with the natural that. disasters that you could uh, that you could pray for there'd be no need for nuclear weapons that's a good thing mm -hmm. why would right. that be a good thing you want to be hit by a nuclear weapon dread no but there would be no need for it because you because can simply you pray, pray for pray natural for disasters kind yeah of thing. Ah, to, to, for I god to it. smite your enemies not mm -hmm. not yeah. needing to build expensive scientific based weapons i get it i get it yeah. so honestly if there is the christian worldview basically this world is trash get out of it burn it down as soon as you possibly can get everybody who would be burned send them to heaven get all those souls send them to heaven get all the people who are here who can't kill themselves and figure out a way to kill them so that way they can go to heaven and have them kill you so you can go to heaven. Basically, when the Christian worldview is true, and that's fact, cross out everything that we know in reality and find the closest way to get to death and, 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 and take yourself out. It's the, it's, it's, it would be chaos, as Larry, you're bringing it up, but it's also sort of like a startling reality when you realize that everyone has access to this super powerful being who can wish destruction on each other, but you don't have to worry about it because if you get destroyed, you get to go to heaven. So like, what's the, what's the problem? <laughs> it's just this terrible, it's this, it's this worldview that people want to happen. Christians go wake up every day hoping that the Christian worldview is a reality and that it takes place, but they don't mm -hmm. realize the implications of a society where we, we are inherently selfish and we look at what we can do to benefit us at the end of the day. And if you give us this insane upsell of, a, a, of an eternal paradise where we can all be happy with each other forever and ever, why spend an extra day on, on earth if we have to? Let's get those, let's get nuclear weapons. Let's get natural disasters happening. And let's get there as soon as we possibly can. It's, it is telling that we don't have a society that looks like that. And it's also telling that we still have Christians who are, you know, in my opinion, as they should be empathetic and sad when there's funerals, who want to have surgeries when they're when they're ill, who 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 want to protect their kids, you know, and for the most part, and and value family and the time that we have here. That in my head is telling of a society that is looking for higher aspirations than what the Christian narrative is selling them. And I think that's what we should try to be knowledgeable about whenever someone tries to sell us the Christian worldview. 
It's just like you don't know what you're you don't know what you're buying. That's that that's basically my my three steps. Anyone other comments? John Richards, what do you think? Oh well, you've just said everything I would have said. <laughs> I did like it's no shortage of salt. Just contact Lot's wife or your nearest wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a reversal of everything we know, isn't it? Mm. So we're turning black into white and white into black. It's mm. just peculiar. Mm. The Christian world really yeah. devalues human life. I think yeah. I think it would all be a bad thing. Or, you know, for what reason to live could you possibly have? We'd all be nihilists. Exactly. We'd be happy nihilists, but we'd be nihilists. Right. It's it's the fast track to self-destruction and nihilism, uh, in the, in the happiest, most insane way possible. It'd be a horror movie. It, it it'd be basically what's that movie where everyone's allowed to kill everybody for like a, a weekend or something like that oh yeah yeah, the, mm. yeah, yeah. that's like it, oh, yeah some it would be that thing. but the religious version of it for like until there's one last human being left and that's just like the last atheist or possibility in the world and just like oh wow that was that sucked <laughs> <laughs> yeah. all right um so any other final thoughts on this before we go to uh just wondering what would happen to crosses because would would there be more of them would we because it's become real now sure yeah well that's what i was saying they'd be kind of like portals you know yeah they'd spring up everywhere you could just stick one there and that's the portal they went through Mm. yeah i like it (laughs) all right so we're going to go into listener comments now uh we have a comment from last week's episode which was surgeon general warning for the bible Dada Trading Room has made a comment that said, Dread, this is directed to you, buddy. Maybe your issue is with the word distinctive in head covering. You need to invent something much more distinctive religiously than just a pirate tricorn. What about a noodly turban? <laughs> well, he, he's already got a noodly beard. If I can find a <laughs> milliner that's willing to put one together for me, I'd, I'd be happy to. You'd be happy for that. So here's my thought. You start with a full-on turban, get the license, driver's license photo. You go there again, and this time it's a turban with like some sort of like texture of like the the Pasifarian noodles on it. And then it just slowly becomes more and more of just a bag of pasta on your head. And then you have to eventually put a colander around that thing. And then be like, right. then the government steps in and is like, hey, you can't put a colander on that head full of pasta. It's like, why? What what condition were you okay with with a head full of pasta? That now when I put a colander on top of it, you're like, that's the proper place. For, that's the proper thing that you yeah, put yeah. colanders. What are you doing? You know, it's funny you should say that because that's that's precisely how I've been working this. Hmm. So um, ICBC allows for um, women to wear a headband, right? As long as it's above the hairline and it's not obstructing. So I wore one and it had the uh, symbol on it and they refused. They said, uh, well, if you flip it over, we'll take your picture. And I I said, well, it doesn't make any sense. Are you objecting to my symbol or are you objecting to my headgear? And then I took it off and I had a temporary tattoo on my forehead with the symbol and they took my picture and I currently have my uh, healthcare card with my picture with my symbol on it so it's it just it's demonstrating just the arbitrariness of mm. their policy and the, and mm. the application of it so yeah we're we're, we're mm. working on it okay. mm. I, I was going to suggest that you know with modern cameras you can take um four or five frames at, at, as one sort of short movie and what we could do is have you morph from you know tricorn to pasta head <laughs> and you, use use that as your passport photo. There you go. Mm, mm. Yeah. Um, so when you in kind of a three D thing, so that which yeah. <laughs> angle you kind of twist it to, it's like exactly. yes, yes. I just want to like see where it's arbitrarily thing, right? stopped in on on the government level. It's like okay, you can have what is it penne, but you can't have rigatoni as the pasta on your shirt. Like That's that right. that crosses yeah. the line. It's like you guys are so silly. But um, I want to be lasagna head. Caddy. <laughs> Caddy May asks in our show on generalization, what do you think of the concept between alphas and betas? 
Is that also generalization? Uh, and she's referring to most likely the, the term alpha, which is like a sort of a character type of a, of a person who's, who's distinguishing themselves as like a, a, a leader, but also unconcerned with the opinions of people beneath them to an extent, whereas beta is, tends to be more of a follower, but also deeply empathetic. What do you guys think of these two concepts? I'll throw I it think it's to too rigid. Mm. Too rigid. I would agree. Well, as an alpha, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I think, so not to throw too much science into this, but I think the terms came from some guy who was doing um, a research e expose on social structures within wolves and within wolf society. And they realized, yeah. oh, here's the alpha wolf and here's the beta wolves, right? But then he came out with that term and it became very popularized. But afterwards he realized, oh, this is not accurate whatsoever. The betas have just as much meaningful impact as the alphas do. And they are, yeah. in fact, it's completely disambiguous. Quite often the yeah, betas will be take none the place of the, form of the, the alpha. latter. Yeah. Well, the trouble with that piece of research was that it was conducted in an enclosed environment. Yes. It was a zoo or something. Yeah. And they don't behave like that in the wild. Right, right, right. So he tried to undo it, but it became so much of a popular cultural thing to be right. an alpha wolf mm -hmm. that the meme. The, the meme has lived on despite the science trying yes. to reverse it. Yes. And a, right. lot of, yeah. a lot of things in science tend to be that way, or yes. in pop culture tend to be that way. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I think that in the spirit of the first part of our show today, the meek shall inherit the earth. Hmm. <laughs> Good. I like it. I hope so. Another yeah. one. Can you prove a point with science? Asked the loose cannon on an um, episode called A Puddle. Oh, hold up. Let me get the full title. A Puddle Shaped Just for Me. Can you prove a point with science? Most likely we made a, we, we, we made a comment probably in the show saying, well, that, I think science proves this point. So, <laughs> which means someone now asked this question. So uh, roundtable, John Richards, can you prove a point with science? No. Science have, doesn't do proof. So my Science. argument would be if you have very well-defined terms, you can, but the things that you can prove tend to be so uh, empirical that it's, it has no real virtue in like a real life setting. So like I can prove three is three. No, no, I can, no, I, no, I disagree. Because what do you think? Science, Science makes use of inductive reasoning. And the whole point of inductive reasoning is that we don't have a full data set. So we can right. never be certain about anything. And proof requires absoluteness. So it, it doesn't exist in science. I will throw this everything, out. Counter throw out. There are proofs is, in science to build up cases for something up to a standard of evidence. And if the ah, original claim is so low, so ah, uh, what is it, mundane, that you, you yeah. can come up with a proof that, that establishes that in my head. What you can use, well, you, you can, can use. build on the body of evidence to support a claim. And if it's mundane enough, I can meet that standard of evidence. That's what I'm saying. What you're talking about there is hypothesizing. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can use logic, which is provable. If, it, or if deductive logic, I suppose, is provable. But you can use any rational thinking you like when you're hypothesizing or when you're designing an investigation. But the outcome is never proven. The, because the we impact have... on objective reality is not uh proved but well, it's the, just the only the... way go ahead the, the, I like only, this conversation. The, the only way anything could ever be fully 100 percent proven as certain would be at the end of time oh we there yet <laughs> yeah, <pretty laughs> larry what do you think well, I, I think uh, can you prove a point with science it depends on the point that you're trying, you're trying to prove I mean, uh, if I if I somebody brought in a rock and said this rock is is radioactive, oh, well, he's making a point. Well, with science, you you've got Geiger counters, you got other things that you can use to measure that the radioactivity of that rock. And with science, you can prove that it's radioactive or not. Uh, I mean, it depends on what you want to prove, and you know, the body of evidence to support it. Like I like the philosophy aspect of not being absolutely certain about anything. I really truly do. But I also feel like some claims are some mundane, like that radioactive rock, that you can come up with tests that objectively right. demonstrate that to yep. be the case. Whether that rock has feelings or sentience, I don't have a thing to measure that. 
So I would be, I would say that's an ambiguous point I can't prove, but if I can even just make it even more simple and be like, that rock is that rock, that is absolutely the case. That's A equals A. That's like one of the logical absolutes. Like it's so mundane, it's a tautology and that can be easily right. demonstrated to be true. And I think points like that can be proven with science. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We need to wrap up. If we oh, can. it's wrapping up time, yeah. guys, yeah. Christians. Uh, you won, but the world is destroyed. It's terrible. <laughs> it's total chaos. Yeah, we prefer this world better. Sorry, guys. Maybe better luck next time. John Richards, where can we find your stuff at? I'm on Free Thought Channel. Nice. And yesterday I had a fantastic chat with a geologist who specializes in earthquakes. Please watch it. You'll love it. We had a good fun time to talk. Her name is uh, Wendy bowen but she's her handle is dr wendy rocks i like it <laughs> i like it i like it sky is there anything you recommend we check out before next week uh on facebook i have the page the novelty and chronicles uh on sunday there's always bible contradictions get, get posted and then i have the uh humans for a kinder world group um it's not too late to join the kindness revolution Nice. There are I love it. a quarter of a million people on Facebook that belong to kindness groups. So I'm not the only hippie in the room. Did you say kindness or communists? Kindness. <laughs> kindness. Kindness. Oh, kindness. Kindness Thank revolution. You. I love it. Also, good um, dog, dad. We support that. John Richards or, or George, is there anything that you would uh, recommend that we check out before next week? I never can remember until after the program. Fair enough. <laughs> I want you to become more scientific in your, your look and, and shtick by next episode. Let's put a virus zero on that thing. Uh, Dread Pirate I, Higgs, anything that you'd recommend? H. You sure. H. Yeah. H on his forehead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get the uh, reference. I get the reference. Yeah. So I, I live stream on uh, my YouTube channel, Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E, at 8 a.m. Or, or no, 7 a.m., sorry. Uh, Sunday mornings uh, at 7 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And I just wanted to mention that uh, um, Data's trading room uh, had been uh, on on live here with me. And one of the things um, he pointed out was that, uh, you know, for intercessory prayer uh, to work for everyone, uh, we would have to live in that uh, uh, infinite worlds uh, cosmology, oh, no. you know, where there's infinite yeah. universes um for everything to come true so i got a lot of problems with those <laughs> is, that, like is that the same thing as as imprecatory prayer intercess i mean intercessory yeah yeah intercessory I, imprecatory prayer is that the same thing or is that something else no i i've never heard of that other word you said i think I, imp imprecatory prayer is where you pray for bad things to happen to somebody else uh, oh. but i do think well it's, it's the, it would be the same as intercessory then I do think it's consistent that if you want the world to end and you're a god, all you have to do is present yourself and, and let everybody know that you're the right god to worship because it will immediately fall into complete catastrophe in about 24 hours. I can almost guarantee that. That's how you do it. <laughs> but is that in human hours or god hours? Yeah. <laughs> We're in god hours right now. It's happening. Larry Rhodes, feel free to take us out. Yes, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button. There you'll find our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter 5 or Digital Free Thought Radio. Um, and I have a book on atheism on Amazon.com called Atheism, What's It All About? Uh, you can find this show on Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, and other podcasts. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Thanks for joining us. And remember, you're, if everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Uh, bye, bye, everybody. Putting a silver stake into the heart of the show. <laughs> <laughs>